Today on UCM's The Buzz. This is a chance for the artists to touch their fans. The Bieber roast was out of control. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Yes. That's why I prepped you for a night. That's why you always late, girl. That's why you always late. Thanks, girl. <laughs> College students may say, I can't handle a credit card, but. Yes, they trap you. Credit they do, cards they trap you. you. Yeah. Welcome to another edition of UCM's The Buzz. We're your hosts, Jasmine Grayson. And Daniel Patterson. At The Buzz, we discuss hot trends, topics, and issues relevant to students and young adults throughout the UCM community and beyond. And I don't know about you, Daniel, but my timeline has been blowing up. <laughs> so let's start the show by reviewing our trending top five. The top five trends were Beaver Rose, Raven Simone, you better have my money, Selena, and Title for All. So first things first, the Bieber roast was out of control. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Yes, Kevin he's Hart. He's the funniest dude in America. Ever. Yeah. Like, he's really proven himself to be the funniest comedian ever like, oh, boy, when he killed the white boy. I was like, that had me dying, like, when dude fell from the sky. Like, and I'm they like, were so rude to Martha Stewart. And, like, she's an old woman. And yeah. I was just like, oh, my God. They were talking about having sex with Martha her. Martha Steele. Well, they did say that she was the only one on stage who did time in jail. <laughs> so um, the next one is the idiotic comments about Raven Simone. She said that there were 50 continents in Africa <laughs> and 50 continents in Europe. And I don't know about you, but I've been taught there's that only there's only seven, seven, continents. seven continents. So I don't know. What's how wrong she with her? Got... Raven, she has like a complex. She's not black. Uh, she doesn't want to be uh, labeled as a lesbian when she's a lesbian. So it's kind of like. Come on now, like, you know, you got to give in someday. She just, something's going on with the Cosby she people. Is, like, yeah. some, they tripping. Like, they got some going on, so. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, B-B-H-M-M. Rihanna's um, this song. It's so catchy. It, it kind of reminds me of Poured Up, but, yeah, I like it. I mean, Rihanna, we've heard, I've heard that term before, the, uh, the name of the song before. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like you just kind of stole it and put it in a song. But she does have catchy hooks, so I'm not taking she nothing does. from her. She does. The baby she's gonna very, get you. She's talented. She, I got the hive behind me. Ain't nobody messing oh, with the hive. Oh, God. Hives. They loyal. <laughs> <laughs> so on to our musical, Unforgettable, Selena. It's yeah. her 20th anniversary of her death, which is unfortunate. Um, oh, unfortunate. She was beautiful. She was talented. And I just want to say that she has the best biopic of all time. She does. And she's one of uh, Latin America's, you know, popularized uh, singers. So... Uh, it's definitely a tragedy. You know? I don't know about you, but I feel like she's what Aaliyah is to the black community. She's like the Latin version, you know, to yeah, the I, Hispanic I get what you're community. Saying, yeah, you're like yeah. nobody can say anything bad about it. Nobody can, you know. Touch and they her. both both left uh, left this earth way too soon. They did, and you know, like they had so much to accomplish. So uh, again, you know, I hope her family is doing well. You know, with that. So may she rest in peace. Yes, yes. And Title for All, which is a new streaming service that I don't know about you, but I'm not paying twenty dollars. Come so on, you, you have to think about it. Like, you, this is a chance for the artists to touch their fans, like you know, to control that music that goes out. Not saying you know that you know because I'm a part of the. But twenty dollars, uh, twenty dollars. But you gotta think about it. They're, they're targeting the people with the money, so why not target the people with the money? I mean, you there's know, so many streaming out. services that are free. Like, we can just get on YouTube, Pandora, Spotify. Why do we need Title? Uh, we'll see, you know, they had mixed reviews, so, you know, we'll see where Title for All goes. So. Yeah, we're going to have to see, but I don't know about that 20s rollers. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for our campus recap. Once again, there were a number of great events that took place on the campus these last couple of weeks. Let's check them out.
Delta Sigma Theta Sorority hosted their eighth annual non-group sex show March 29th in the Union. There was some serious competition as talented groups showcased their stepping and dance skills in front of a large audience. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was yeah their eighth annual step show, and by far, I feel like this was like one of the best ones I have ever seen. Well, we good had for a, them. Good yes, for them. Yes, we had a team that was sponsored. Unfortunately, you know they did not win. But shout out to what the was winners. Their name? Uh, we don't want to, you know. <laughs> you know, know we are gonna focus on the people the who won one. because you know at shout the end out of the day, the freaks. yeah, freaks. Uh, Sou. They, mm -hmm. they did a great, a phenomenal job. Great theme so at the end of the day it was you know it was an amazing show and it, i loved it so shout out to the deltas yeah y'all go <laughs> <laughs> student activities sponsored the event encouraged the heart march 30th in the union students participated in various exercises determined what leads what leads and encourages them both personally and professionally uh, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to attend this event, but no. I, from you, I heard it was a great event. Can you tell me something about it? It was a great event. I saw a lot of familiar faces. Ralph Watson was there. He's a, the ABC president. Yes. So, hey, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just gave us a chance to understand that people are encouraged differently and they think differently. So as a team player, you should be aware that people probably don't think like you. So. When yeah. you encourage and you contribute to a group, just be really aware. Of, you know, of everyone's <laughs> views and personality. So, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Daniel and I picked up a few dancing tips and skills at the Swing and Salsa Dance event April 2nd in the Union. Students and faculty learned how to salsa and dance the night away. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I picked up, you know, a few kickball changes and, you know, yeah, the some merengue. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. It would have been nice if they had a place. Selena, while we, you know, a little Billy Billy Bomba, you know, while we were. Billy Billy Bomba. <laughs> while we were performing. So, yeah, it was fun. It was um, an event that I'm not normally apt to do. Yeah, so yeah. I'm glad that um, Spotlight had offered something where I can just step out of my comfort zone. Yeah, it was definitely you know, a little culture change, you know. So, you know, from, uh, you know, pop locking, we got to do a little merengue. Yeah, say, so you no know. twerk, but salsa. So, <laughs> salsa. hey. <laughs> it's time for Did You See That? Where we review and discuss the big moments in TV over the last couple of weeks. The first show we'll discuss is ABC's Blackish. The family sitcom stars Anthony Anderson and Tracy Ellis Ross as Andre and Rainbow Johnson, black parents who face the struggling, I'm sorry, who face the struggle of raising their children in a predominantly white neighborhood. In this week's episode, a colleague spilled the beans to Rainbow about how Andre never had the vasectomy he had scheduled a few years ago. Uh, I totally agree with Andre. Like, I'm not about to go in, you know, the snip and burn. Uh, but they didn't want to have no kids, so Andre had the choice of either you go. You know, out, or you gonna have <laughs> some more kids, so or and I'm sure he I don't mean, want to be married and wear a condom, so he needs why to get not? that I mean, like, snip nobody, nobody, I would never do that. So I mean, like, that's just something that me personally, so I he would gonna never have to do. compromise. So, okay, he can do. So we can pull he can out wear and wear the condom. A condom. What like, we gonna do, Andre? I mean, you can do both. <laughs> you can win, win right there. <laughs> well, the last show we'll recap is I Zombie, a new show featured on the CW where zombie med student Liv Moore uses the benefits of her immortalness to assist the police. In this week's episode, Liv and Detective Bobino <laughs> investigated a hit and run case and discovered the victim was a sociopathic hitman. Uh, this episode it was interesting. Like I never watched I Zombie until you know we had to you know research watch it, it and watch show. it, watch yeah. it for the show and i sat down i watched it and i found out like i actually enjoy the show like it's I interesting it. she eats brains and you know she can uh see your thoughts and stuff like that that's interesting like it's, it, it was not original it reminded me of that so raven when she had like oh, the my. visions because yeah every time she <laughs> ate a brain like she would have a, a vision and i was just like this is so gross and so stupid but whatever i mean you can't compare it i do think detective bobbin is cute hey, okay detective Bobbino. whatever <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. Next up, we're discussing the importance of responsible money <laughs> management and spending habits for those on a tight, or should I say my, or should I say college budget. <laughs> With special guest Todd McClure, a professor of finances here at UCM. He's here to give us some tips and advice. So don't touch that dial. You're watching UCM's The Buzz. I choose red to blaze my own trail. <laughs> I choose red to be with students and faculty who make me feel at home. I wanted a university with a big picture perspective. That's why I chose red. <laughs> why do you choose red? 
Choose red. Choose red. Choose the University of Central Missouri. Yeah. Choose red. Can I do that? Is that allowed? Welcome back to UCM's The Buzz. As a college student, it can be very difficult to stay on top of things when your funds are low. Some students may receive a majority of their finances from family members, financial aid, or their job. Making sure you save and have responsible spending habits based off your budget is essential to making sure that your bank account is at a good place by the time <laughs> the semester ends. So today we have a special guest, Professor of Finances in the Harmon College of Business, Todd McClure, here to discuss the importance of money management and saving while in college. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. No problem. Can you start by telling us uh, about your experiences with finance? Sure. Well, I mean, um, you know, my experiences primarily come from my personal experiences. I grew up uh, in a household that had a, my dad was in banking business for over 20 years. And so oh, wow. he really stressed the importance to me uh, of starting young and, and taking an active uh, approach to my own financial money management, um, not only in the short term, but in the uh, in the long term. And I think then that really kicked in, you know, once I left high school, I went to New Mexico State for my undergrad and so that's a long way away from Independence where I was born and raised <laughs> and so uh, sort of got thrown in into my own um, world if you will where I had to manage the finances or my finances on a personal level and then uh, from a business side managing a couple golf courses I've also had some business side experience with the, the financial side of, of business operations. All right. Okay. You just spoke of uh, management so mm -hmm. what advice would you give regarding money management? Well, as Jasmine said in the in in the opening bit there, I think the the <laughs> one thing to drive home for college students especially is the importance of, you know, really coming up with a budget. I think, you know, you, you hear it and it's sort of, yeah, okay. We have so many other things going on that mm -hmm. how am I supposed to develop a budget? And and really, you know, my take on it and and in the personal finance course, we have one project where students go through two or three different steps of creating a budget and I tell them there there's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, there's, there's really no yes or no uh, answer. And so it just comes down to identifying where does your money come from, um, even if it's, you know, family allowances or little yeah. babysitting money over the summer <laughs> or whatever. I was whatever. a babysitter once. <laughs> What's that? I was a babysitter yeah. once. Yeah, and, and so even, you know, while that doesn't seem like a, a, a big sum of money a lot of times, mm -hmm. um, knowing where the money comes in, and really where it goes out, I think, is, is really key. And, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and it doesn't, quite frankly, have to take a whole lot of time. I think it's just sort of getting into a routine and almost making it habitual to regularly yeah. check that. So we know that saving is very important. But what tips do you have for us who are very tempted to spend? Well, I, I think if you... Uh, look at any financial textbook or if you even do a simple Google search you're gonna find one of the first things a lot of people say is is really prioritize your needs and your wants um, for instance I went over to Einstein this morning I got gotta have coffee in the morning right and mm -hmm. you know a coffee may be a need if yeah. we're sort of slow for risers um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but a, a, a latte or a you know caramel macchiato might be a want and you know Jasmine you were talking about certain things, the, uh, a necklace or, or some necklace, sort of Im shoes, impulse purchase. And, <laughs> and, Makeup. <laughs> and, I, and I always say, you know, I like to tell the students, look, you don't want to necessarily rule out those sort of wants. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise life's going to be so, sort of, uh, not very much fun. <laughs> but I think if you prioritize and figure out what is it that you really need, really want, and if you set up a budget and a plan, um, you know, you can sort of have those little splurges or those little treats, if you will, along the way and, and not lose, you know, or get set back by so much. So you mentioned budget a couple times. For mm -hmm. those who are on a budget, mm -hmm. what are the ideal spending habits that we should have? That's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think the, so. The, the, um, I would say, you know, everybody has their own, again, particular time and circumstance and wants and, and everything. And whether there's a right spending habit or a wrong spending habit, I think even if it's one or two little things along the way, uh, an example would be instead of eating out at, at, at a restaurant for lunch or something every day, 
if you can find a way to maybe two or three days a week bring your lunch or um, you know if you if you have some cash and you go to a, a, a coffee shop or something like that and you get some change it's the en at the end of the day put that away mm -hmm. um, a as far as spending habits again that just comes down to knowing what what really is a need and a want and and you got to have the self-discipline, I guess, yeah. to say, self I, I can and, pass on it this time. Yes, self-discipline and knowing your limits. I would say yeah. so. I would say so, too. I have one quick question. Sure. All right. In your personal opinion, do you think that the university should require students to take a personal finance class as a part of becoming a, a, into any major? I should probably <laughs> say yes, being as it's uh, it's what I teach. Do I think it's it would it should be strongly advised? Yeah, and I think that um, my personal experience is just teaching the class uh, in the last year is, you know, um, for whatever reason, I find a lot of students seem to not have a, a whole lot of background in it. I don't know if it's just maybe they didn't feel comfortable talking to their parents about it or friends or whatever, and so um, you know. It, I think there's some very valuable information in the class, mm -hmm. whether it be about you know uh, creating a budget or whether it be about uh, the simple uh, things to think about when you get a credit card. You know, oh, a lot yeah. of a lot of college <laughs> students may say, "I can't <laughs> handle a credit card," but yes, they trap you. Credit <laughs> they do, cards they trap you. you. Yes, and so if nothing else, um, you know some of the basic things that you might be able to take uh, away will help again achieve you know, those goals that you have down the road. And, and, and Jasmine, you also mentioned something about student loans. And I know college is, is expensive. Yes. It can be expensive, <laughs> and a lot of people rely on student loans to get them through. Mm -hmm. And when you finish school, then you're faced with this mounting, you know, this debt. huge hill of, of debt. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's never too early to start. And so if you prioritize that and say within... 10 years of graduating, I want to pay down X amount. You prioritize your debt, and so in your budget, you make that a priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing, sorry to just ramble on, I, I would say the other <laughs> thing is, is when it comes to saving, when you make your budget, don't put savings or set-aside money at the bottom. Put it at the top. Mm -hmm. Pay yourself first. Okay. Because if you pay your rent and your utilities and your gas, and you leave everything else to the end, well, who knows what's there. If you set aside a little bit first, mm -hmm. might help you in the long run a little bit. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks once again to our professor, Tom McClure, for being our special guest. I went on campus this week to see what students' attitudes were concerning budgeting. Let's check it out. Financial aid from refund checks and yeah, my parents. My parents, they supported me through uh, the school years. My job, working. Right now I work for Planet Sub, and then I also do an internship on the weekends. I keep my checking account, I check up on it probably daily, um, just make sure I'm not spending too much. At the beginning of every month, I just look at like make sure I got my rent paid, make sure I got all my bills paid, and then after that, I put the rest of my money in the food and getting stuff that I need. My mom helps me a lot on like budgeting and saving and making sure I don't spend too much money when I don't need to. I could say I'm struggle a little here and there, um, but at least I have my parents to back me up. Um, I ask them when I really need it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm kind of struggling here and there, but I'm trying to become more like financially aware of like money and income. And I feel fairly secure, but you know, like any other college student, it's it's tough. Because of how much I've saved, I feel comfortable. Make a plan and stick to it. I guess um, I know it can be hard, but it's, you got to do it. It's the best way to keep track of it. Not take out so many loans. If they can go about going to school without having to take out so many loans, it would definitely be helpful for the long run, in the long run. Don't put, all, like, don't spend all your money at one time. Think about, like, where you should put your money, like, how you should spend your money. Just try to save as much as you can so that if something pops up, you can pay for it, rather than trying to struggle and get the money last minute. If you, uh, if you don't work, do get a refund, do not take that money and just go 
cash out at the mall because you're going to get in a situation where you're going to need to have some money to support yourself. You don't want to have to reach out to your family and asking people for money all the time. You want to be able to take care of yourself. Next, we're discussing hot hair styles trends with our style expert, Brianna. And later, we'll reveal our Entrepreneur of the Week, a student who has his own hair cutting business. So don't go away, you're watching UCM's The Buzz. The UCM Media Network is sponsored in part by Fitters Pizza and Pub, setting the standard for good times and good food at 131 West Pine Street in Warrensburg, and Fitters Fifth Street Pub at 500 South Ohio Street in Sedalia. Craig Hibben Shelter Insurance, Auto, Home, and Life Insurance at 500 East Gay in Warrensburg. Bryant Motors, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep at 2901 South Limit in Sedalia. And Pummel Sporting Goods, in business since 1976, located at 2400 West 16th Street in Sedalia. Welcome back to UCM's The Buzz. It's time for Hot Looks. And speaking of Hot Looks, I love your new hair, Jasmine. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Inches. <laughs> so, ladies, if you're looking to switch up your look or you want something, well, you're in luck. So, today we're discussing hot hairstyles and hair colors with our style expert, Brianna. Thanks, Jasmine. I'm loving your new look as well. Thanks. <laughs> we're going to take a look at some hot looks around campus and then discuss our hot hairstyles. So, Bree, what do you have for us today? Well, <laughs> let's start off by discussing some hot colors. A lot of ladies have switched from the black to blonde ombre and now do what I like to call a fiery ombre. It, it usually consists of going from dark brown or black at the roots to a red, burgundy, orange, or all of the above at the ends. So, I really like it because it gives it a bit of a spice, you know, mm -hmm. to the, especially because it's like springtime now, so you want to add a bit of color to your you know, your hairstyle and everything. Not right. only your wardrobe, but you want to spice up your look too, you know. I get right. You. And I just like the ombre look because it's like a gradient effect. A gradient effect. It's not mm -hmm. just a two tone. Mm -hmm. It's not too right. bold, two like a Rihanna red. Yeah, it can look, uh, yeah, mess yeah. it's not blenderized. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, another color I'm seeing a lot more of and that's trending is gray. That's right. It's not just for your granny anymore. <laughs> if you get the right shade, add some high and low lights, it can make even the plainest hairdo look fierce. Now, I'm not sure I could pull off the gray. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do it right. Some people do it wrong, too. You know, they do it too dark or too light. It looks crazy, look ashy. But <laughs> um, I think it was, what's her name? Toya? Toya, yes. yeah. She, I love hers. I love hers. And I like it on um, Caucasian women because, you know, they have, like, their nice pale skin. So, like, really. So, would you say that it's more for lighter skin women or can darker skin no i think it? every anybody you can, can do it? but okay. the thing about coloring is you have to match it to your skin so like a right. blonde can look electrified on like on a, a caucasian woman but a black woman can also you know look just as good in a blonde if you just get the right hue of that color okay so my darker, question is gray. is are these women who, who are dying their hair gray going to diet when, when they get up old age and have real gray hair <laughs> tell me something i don't know <laughs> now onto some hairstyles Boho waves are really big this season. They're loose, very natural looking waves. To get this look, all you need is a little hairspray and a winding curl. I would start curling the hair about halfway down to achieve a very relaxed look. Now, me personally, I don't like the loose waves. Now, like I said, on Caucasian women, it looks, it's it looks very it grungy. It looks snappy. It looks snappy and looks like your hair smells like smoke. Like, <laughs> no, it looks like wet dog. Yeah, it depends it how you like wear it. I don't yeah. know. It smells like Some women can pull like my little sister, day. she likes the whole grungy look. So I feel like she, if she like, you know, threw her, her little hair in, she can probably do that. But me, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'll sit on that. Okay, another ha hairstyle are bombshell curls. Ladies can let out their inner diva with these curls. They're glamorous, have a ton of volume, and most of all, sexy. 
To achieve this look, you'll need a hairspray, your hair to be parted in small sections, and at least an inch curling rod. Make sure you have the top point of the rod facing down when you curl. Now, I like those because they look big. I like big hair, obviously. It's sexy. Mm -hmm. It's voluminous. Are we talking about the Victoria's curls, Secret on like, the runway Yeah, they're like little, you know, like big spiral Ours curls. They're like big, big bouncy curls. curls. Okay, like, now, can you just... explain to me, okay, it takes you how long to curl your hair? Or like, if you're trying to be out by, it's like, we got to be somewhere by eight. You but, need to start curling it like Well, I four, think it depends. Right? Because I have natural hair. <laughs> I have natural hair, so my hair can, like, get a curl like that. And mm -hmm. I can be good. Like, I curled my hair yesterday for, like, an hour. And it was good. Okay. But if you want, like, some big lasting curls, I would suggest doing it overnight. Overnight. And it'll last for well, a few days. You, you know, can sleep on it with be rollers and flexi rides. of the time, please, when you're trying to curl your hair. Because, you know, you can uh -uh, be doing do it for women. hours. And, like, we got somewhere to be. And you <laughs> still curling your try hair. Try being a woman and doing your hair. <laughs> well, I, I'm, like, you quick. I don't like being <laughs> taken all day. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. So, I don't like taking forever in my hair either. That's you why I prep before night. You can't can't. That's why you always lay, girl. That's why you always lay. Thanks, girl. Now, braids have always been great to incorporate with different hairstyles and versatile enough to resonate with all hair types. Whether it's a French braid or a fishtail, this look is always cool and very stylish. Now, Agreed. I do like the braids, you know. Um, I like when women with longer hair, they do like the fishtail and like mm -hmm. people are getting even more creative where they're doing like bows and stuff and like doing different kind of braids. So have you ever heard like cool. a three, three and twist? Yeah, So like yeah, you do yeah. things like that or you can do like a, um, a, a goddess. Yeah, a goddess. Nice. Yeah, that's braid. Nice. Yeah, right, right. I like, that. I that's like nice. it. It's like a halo. Simple. It's very versatile. Like it can be like for the club of a bridal. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of yeah. brides yeah. wear that mm -hmm. style. I like it a lot. Oh, yeah. Now, if you want a head full of braids, try Senegalese twists or box braids. You can style them in so many ways and also give your natural hair a break. Now, I remember Highly when our first yeah. it shows, we, I had the box braids. Yeah, mm -hmm. It didn't last long. And, you know, <laughs> I like my natural hair, but I do I enjoy being able to just get up and go, uh, just, you know, throwing up in the top. And you can something. style it however. Up, mm -hmm. down, you can curl them, curls, too. Curls, yep. That's all braids. I hear is, girl. girl, I got to get my box braids for the summer. Like, girls <laughs> cling to that Natural hair summer. frizzes out like... <laughs> It was starting to rain. I had to run over here, guys. It was just like, <laughs> you don't want your hair to get Sorry. wet, you know? Okay, so okay. box braids is the best way to go mm -hmm. for the summer? I like the yeah, summer. I, okay, yeah, for yeah. the summer? Or Havana yeah. twist. Those are really cute. Yes. Those are really cute. <laughs> <laughs> now, for my natural ladies, Bantu Night Out hairstyles are great for voluminous curls that last days. You can also do flexi rod sets that creates consistent and sleek bouncy spiral curls. Now, I do the um, uh, flexi rods. I did that last week. I do bantu knots, but I only don't like blowing out hair. Mm -hmm. But another tip for ladies with natural hair, if you don't like, if you want the natural look, but you don't want to have your hair out to protect it, we do have um, those protective hairstyles. The uh, what is it called? Those like. Um, I'm not a natural girl. Well, it's like the it's like the the hair that you sew into your hair, but it's it's natural hair. It's just not your own, obviously. Like crochet, oh, crochet braids. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just want to say that your curls look amazing. Thanks, girl. <laughs> curls for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for those hot looks, Brianna. Now let's check out and see what our hot look of the week is. Now it's time for our Feature Entrepreneur of the Week, where we highlight a student's business or side hustle. This <laughs> week's entrepreneur has the popular haircutting business on campus called Cut Me Up E. Let's watch. My business called Cut Me Up E. Most to call it mobile barber services, but I also got a new business. It's called Chapo CB. So it's a Chapo celebrity barber. I started my business in 2011 when I got out of high school and went to barber school. And right after barber school, I started my own business while I was working in the shop as well. When I first started, I was a Unity Barber Shop, which is a shop in U City. Got closed down while she bought the property. Now I'm cutting at Make Me Over in University City, but I also cut here in Warrensburg and in Mizzou. My business entails regular haircut, celebrity barber, uh, CEO, uh, CEO clientele. Currently, I'm trying to get Ambrose on the team. I do ladies hair, I do eyebrows, I do Beijing dyes. So basically, I get all the aspects of the haircuts. I do designs, mohawks, anything you ask for, I can do. I just like the atmosphere of working in a barber shop, and it's something I like to do, but it will become more of a hobby that I get paid for after I start making other business expeditions. Five years from now, I feel like I should be having more celebrity clientele, so it should be more stable. I see myself traveling more with my business. Hopefully, if everything goes right in five years, I won't be cutting her no more because I done made enough money to have some other businesses. 
you gotta pursue it relentlessly and you can't really stop and uh everything you do is a reflection of your business as well so you can't have any sloppy work come out because it reflects yourself and you don't want no bad reviews on your business and you just gotta work hard every day so you can check me on style seat you just type in chapo uh uh, style seat the app I got where you got to schedule your appointments or you can follow me on snapchat not chopo CB or Instagram cut me up underscore e Twitter cut me up underscore e That's cool Evan uh, he also cut my hair he and cut my hair too <laughs> and he also uh, is going into the weave selling business so oh, to come see him you. and uh, Nina Hunter they're actually uh, starting to sell bundles so I mean if okay. you need your weave you know he got you on lock so make sure you check out cut him up e and also Nina Hunter if you need your bundles are your haircut they taking over the hair game completely Go y'all. <laughs> okay we're gonna take a quick break but don't go away because we're gonna sum up the week next also, we're going to reveal fan favorites, our meme of the week, and our super selfie. So stay tuned. You're watching DCM's The Buzz. I choose red for unlimited possibilities. I choose red because my family is less than an hour away, but I still get to be independent. I get to apply my classroom experience to my everyday life. That's why I chose red. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> why do you choose red? Choose red. Choose red. Choose the University of Central Missouri. Choose red. Kidding, that was a joke. Welcome back. So it's been quite the yeah. week, Daniel. What's your one word to sum it all up? I'm going to say music. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with music because, uh, you know, Selena, the death of Selena, uh, title for all, uh, Rihanna's new song, the salsa dance. So it was like, it was a week full of music. So, I mean, I love music. So I feel like, you know, that's a perfect word to use. What about you? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I always say unforgettable because that Bebe Rose was hilarious. <laughs> we can't forget the beautiful and iconic Selena. Yes. And um, who can forget the idiotic comments that that's so Raven said. No, yeah. that Raven smiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jasmine, postseason NBA will be here soon, and there's been a lot of debate as to who should be the MVP. Who do you think should be the MVP? Now, you know, good and well, I don't know, no, no, no basketball. I don't even know why you're asking me. So who do you think should be the MVP? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not too, too much into sports, but, you know, from what I've been seeing, what I've been watching, what I've been hearing, I'm going to go with Westbrook. Okay. And uh, from the Oklahoma Thunder, I just feel like you know he's the new he's the, the new kid on the block. You know LeBron, he's been MVP. You know uh, D Rose, well you know he working on his legs, so you know he can't he can't really you know compete right now. But I feel like you know let's give it to somebody who's well deserving of it. So that's what I feel like. Or, should or be. we can give it to somebody who's really cute. Hey Carmelo Anthony. Oh, he, he, okay. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, we went on campus and asked students to sum up who they think should be the NBA MVP this season. Let's see what they had to say. Steph Curry should be the MVP. Steph Curry over James Harden. Well, it should obviously be Steph Curry. LeBron James. I believe it should be Steph Curry. I'm definitely taking James Harden. James Harden. LeBron James. James Harden. Steph Curry with the shot. So he's had a great season. Standing on a fantastic streak. Because it's in his blood. The boy drains threes. Multiple 50 point games. Because no one is better. He is the king. Beer to beer. It's time for our meme of the week. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't have a best friend, so I don't know nothing about that. But I mean, when your friends come <laughs> around with that bad energy, sometimes just go, just go over there. I'm having a good day. You just, you know, stay over there. So Positive I... vibes only. <laughs> <laughs> and now for our fabulous super selfie, which goes to the pretty eye, Tramonica Anderson, yeah. who is a nursing major here on campus. Yo girl. I see her with the uh, the fiery red ombre. I know that's a yeah, good look. Yeah, we just talked about that. Talking about hey, that. She, she nailed it with that one. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, we are a student-based and student-produced show. So please support us by following us on Twitter and Instagram. You can share your story ideas, memes, selfies with us, and also volunteer to also become a part of our production experience. 
And thank you so much for joining us. And be sure to keep an ear to the streets because we have some more <laughs> surprises in store for you guys and a lot more coming up in the following weeks. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>